Let us all that we can to build a better future. I hope everyone's sitting down for this. Biden states, we're in a fight between oligarchy and democracy. Oligarchy and democracy. That's what Biden said. We don't have a democracy in this country. We, we already have an oligarchy. So basically what, what, what he's talking about has to deal with the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Of course, he's trying to say that Russia's an oligarchy, which it is. And that the United States soldiers that are stationed there, well, they're the defenders of democracy. But, I mean, we, we, we don't have a democracy. We, we have an oligarchy in this country. We have corruption running amok. And I know some people will bring up the fact, well, wait, Congress recently proposed this legislation of trying to get money out of politics, get rid of Citizens United, which I think that's great. Sounds good on paper. What's the follow through? Because none of those politicians are going to support that damn bill, especially in Washington, D.C. They're not going to do that. We had this little clip from CNN. Let's play it. It's a long time. And the people who travel with me know that because uh, I was a senator for 36 years, the Foreign Relations Committee, traveled around the world, and eight years as vice president, now president. And, uh, you know, uh, a couple things. First of all, thank you. You represent 1% of the American people. None of you have to be here. You all decided to be here for your country. Every one of you volunteered. Every single one of you stepped up. And the rest of the 99% of the rest of the country, including me, owes you. And owes you big, number one. Number two, you know, uh, we're a unique country in many ways. And we're the only country, the only country in the world not based, organized based on geography or ethnicity or religion or race or anything else. We're based pause on it, the idea. Pause it. Pause it. So Biden said that we're the only country in the world not to be identified through geography, ethnicity, religion, or any other perspective point of view. <clears throat> Biden, I, I know you're old. You should be counting trucks and eating ham at this point. But um, what world are you living in? No, seriously, I, I, I want to know. Because if you haven't read American history, it's, it's pretty messed up. It's pretty messed up, especially from the founding days of the Republic. So I don't know where he's saying that somehow America is the only country in the world. No, we've got our own fair share of skeletons, our own hypocrisy. Let's go back playing the rest of the video. Literally the only country in the world based on the idea that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all women and men are created equal, endowed no. by their creator with certain inalienable rights. No, yeah, pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it. Biden, I, again, it's, it's cute that you're quoting the Constitution, but remember... The founding fathers did not recognize the slaves. African Americans were considered three fifths of a person. The Native Americans were exterminated. Women couldn't vote from the founding of the Republic. And in order to vote, you had to be a land owning white man. Now, of course, there were a lot of changes over time, but people had to fight for it. It wasn't the politicians. It wasn't the lawmakers. It was the people that demanded their rights. And let's face it, we're losing our rights every single day, especially through big tech censorship. How, again, you have these corporations, Wall Street executives, big banks controlling everything because they are. And right now there is the rich and the fucked. And a vast majority of the U.S. population is part of the group known as the fucked because people are being evicted from their homes. Small businesses are being shut down. You got student debt. You got medical debt. You now you got food insecurity, inflation on the rise. In order to make it in this country, you got to be born rich. You got to be connected. You got to have a good last name. That's the hypocrisy right now. Play the rest of the video if we can. But it's the truth of who we are. We've never lived up to it, but we've never walked away from it. And the rest of the world looks to us because, you know, we not only lead by the example of our power, but by the power of our example. And your generation combines both. The rest of the world looks at you and sees who you are. They see you are a multi-ethnic group of Americans that are, in fact, together 
and united in one resolve to defend your country and to help those who need help. That's why you're here. I spent a lot of time in Ukraine when I was a senator and vice president. I've spoken to the Rada in the days when they, in fact, uh, didn't have what you'd call a democracy and was there in the Madan when the former leader had to take off and head up into Russia. Was it? Uh, so, you know. There's a reason why that former leader ran off, because in 2014, the United States put in $5.5 billion for a coup in 2014 in Ukraine. Now, that's not the first time the United States committed a coup or regime change war. You can look at what happened with Iran in the 1950s. We can look at the epic failure of the Bay of Pigs in Cuba. We can look at what happened to Libya with the removal of Muammar Gaddafi. Now there's open slave trade there in Libya, of all places. Well, there you go. That's happening. You have, again, the attempted regime change war, especially in Syria. Oh, and how could we forget Iraq and Afghanistan? Oh, and the ongoing genocide that's happening in Yemen. That's a thing that's happening, too, by the way. Our example is, if you don't do what we want, we're going to commit a coup. Or we're going to commit, again, sanctions. Blockade you. That's what our foreign policy is. Let's play the rest of the video. No, but the Ukrainian people, Ukrainian people have a lot of backbone. They have a lot of guts. And I'm sure you're observing it. And I don't mean just the military, which is, we've been trained in since back when they uh, Russia moved into uh, in, in the southeast southeast um, Ukraine. But also the average citizen. Look at how they're stepping up. Look at how they're stepping up. And you're going to see when you're there, and you've, some, some of you have been there, you're going to see, you're going to see women, young people standing, standing in the middle of the front of a damn tank, just saying, I'm not leaving. I'm holding my ground. They're incredible, but they take a lot of inspiration from us. And you know, a woman who just died, the Secretary of State, used to have an expression. She said, we are the essential nation. It sounds like a bit of a hyperbole, but the truth of the matter is, you are the organizing principle around which the rest of the world is, the free world is moving. And we're in the midst of, and I don't want to sound too philosophic here, but you're in the midst of a fight between democracies and, 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 and oligarchs. Pause it. Don't have a democracy in America. Those of you who don't know, when Citizens United and McCutcheon's decision were passed by the United States Supreme Court, we open legalized bribery in this country. Anybody can buy or interfere in a U.S. election, not just Russia. Anybody. Any corporation here in America. Any corporation overseas, any country overseas can interfere into our elections or buy off a politician. Our politicians are sick individuals. They get insider information when it comes down to trades that are being done in Wall Street and are able to provide that information to their friends and family members so that they're going to all get richer. They have the inside information so that they're one step ahead of the curve. And these same sick politicians put on a smiling face telling you to please vote for us and we'll protect your freedoms. We'll help you out. We'll do X, Y, and Z for you. When they haven't. In 2020, they abandoned us. In 2021, they abandoned us again. This year, they're going to be asking you for your vote and then they're going to give you the middle finger and abandon you again. These politicians don't care about us. They don't think about us. They don't like us. And you have many of these politicians who've been in office for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. We have politicians that if they get reelected in their next election cycle, they'll be in their late 80s, early 90s. There's a childish mindset in Congress. And the people at the helm are children, but yet they have a lot of power. They have the mentality of children, basically. And these politicians, they don't share power. They don't make your lives easier. So this whole idea that it's an oligarchy versus democracy, it's really been oligarchs versus oligarchs. 
When's the last time the American people were properly represented and taken care of in this country? When was the last time that our government actually helped us out? Because all the legislation I'm seeing, especially in Washington, D.C., is designed to help out the rich. Designed to make their lives easier. So they can continue to profit. The rich get the tax breaks. The rich get the benefits. The politicians get the benefits. Remember, these are the same politicians that also, also, decide to increase their pay, give themselves more benefits. And by the way, they have gold-plated health care. These politicians have Medicare for all. It's oligarchs versus oligarchs. And you, the regular working person, well, you're their little pawn. And that's all over this world. We're seeing that being played out. This conflict in Ukraine, it's a battle between oligarchs. Who controls what? Who of the ruling class controls what of this area or that area? And who has to fight it? The poor people, working class people. Who's being screwed over? Poor people, working class people. In these politicians who live so comfortably, who eat their fancy foods, actually maybe take a pause in their moment in life and think, huh, gee, I'm living pretty well. What about the rest of my people? They don't think about their constituents. Look at how we had... United States Senator, Democrat, former activist, and even former Green Party, Senator Cinema. We've covered on this show numerous times how she's walked away and ignored her constituents. How she apologized for people interrupting uh, her conversation with some of her oh so fantastic friends in Washington, D.C. Same thing with Manchin, how he was talking down to activists and organizers when they were demanding the Build Back Better be passed, he was in his yacht, an awesome big yacht. And he was saying, oh, I listen to you. I care about you. Then he went right back to drinking his martini. That's for all these politicians. And how could we ever forget our wonderful progressive politicians in a Democratic Party when we need them the most for force to vote for Medicare for all or force to vote for 15 or to march for Medicare for all or the three three day general strike summit? Where were they at? Nowhere. AOC has time to go to an awesome little dance party wearing a fancy dress that says tax the rich. Okay, sounds good on paper. But even she's not doing a damn thing. And Bernie, well, he's nothing but doing uh, his little cheerleading dance for the Democratic Party. It's oligarchs versus oligarchs. We can, let's play the rest of the video. Spent more time with, they tell me, than any other world leader points out to me he believes in China that democracies can't succeed in the 21st century. The reason is things are moving so fast, change is happening so quickly, that democracies require consensus. And we can't put together consensus as quickly as autocrats can. So what's at stake, not just in what we're doing here in Ukraine to try to help the Ukrainian people and keep the massacre from continuing. But beyond that, What's at stake is what, the, what, what's, what are your kids and grandkids going to look like in terms of their, their, their freedom? What's happening? The last 10 years have been fewer democracies have been formed than we've lost in the world. So this Pause is a here. what you're engaged in as much. Notice those words he said. That there's fewer democracies being formed in this world than in the last 10 years. Gee, I, I wonder what's going on in those last 10 years, you know? Oh, I know. U.S. intervention. We've been interfering with other countries and their political governments and their elections. But it's been, not been the last 10 years, Biden. It's been happening under America's watch for quite some time. You know, this might come as a shocker to a lot of people, but there was one point where Iran actually had this, a national government. A democracy, a fledgling democracy at the time. Disappeared. Because big oil from Great Britain and America wanted to control the Iranian oil fields. And the Iranian government wanted to use that oil to rebuild their country and provide for their citizens. That wasn't going to happen, according to big oil here in America and Great Britain. And a coup was done. We replaced the government with a dictatorship. 
and, a, and that dictatorship oppressed the people. And I think we all know what happened to that dictatorship. It was replaced by something far, far worse. But that's because of the legacy of America. We're interfering with other countries' elections. We've been doing it for some time. Read the book, uh, Confessions of an Economic Hitman. That's a very real thing. We've been interfering with other countries' elections. That's not how a democracy should act. That's what America's been doing. Let's play the rest of the video. Much more than just whether or not you can alleviate the pain and suffering of the people of Ukraine. We're in a new phase. Your generation, we're in a new phase. pause it here. About every- a little humorous note. We are not in a new phase. We're keeping our original phase right here. Okay? I want to hear any of this other BS from Biden. No, no new phase. I want to keep the original phase. All right, so let's play the rest. Every four or five generations that comes along and changes, fundamental change takes place. The world ain't going to be the same, not because of Ukraine, but I'm not going to be the same 10, 15 years from now in terms of our organizational structures. And the question is, who's going to prevail? Are democracies going to prevail and the, and the values we share? Or autocracy is going to prevail? And that's really what's at stake. So what you're doing is consequential, really consequential. And as I said uh, to a group in the dining room, you all in the chow for that mess hall, the fact of the matter is that you are the finest, this is not hyperbole, you are the finest fighting force in the history of the world. Let me say it again. The finest fighting force in the history of the world. Part of the reason is you've had to fight so much for the last 20 years. Pause it here. There's been reasons why we've been fighting those wars. For war profiteers and big oil. Let's look at the big lie in Iraq. Weapons of mass destruction. Turns out there were no WMDs there, Biden. And the Obama-Biden administration could have done something to hold the Bush-Cheney administration accountable for their actions. Accountable for their lies. But oh no. Under the Obama Biden administration, we went from two wars from Iraq and Afghanistan to seven. An ongoing genocide happening in Yemen, Syria, Libya, and so much more. So for the past 20 years, we haven't seen peace in our time. It's been ongoing conflict after conflict after intervention after intervention. All to help out big oil, Wall Street executives, bankers, the top 1%. Because everyone has to earn a profit. There's reasons why it's happening. It's because it's the U.S. instigating this problem. Let's play the rest. But nobody, no other generation has had to... Be in a battle, have your buddy blown up, wipe the blood off the Humvee and get back in and saddle up and go for another six months. Second time I flew in, I've been in and out of Iraq and Afghanistan about uh, 40 times, 30 some times, 38 times. And every time I'd go in, I'd see, like the last time I flew in, and I flew in on, the, I'm up in the cockpit when I was landing in Bagram. And I, there were six people came up with the cargo, basically, while I was flying. And I said, how many of you is your first tour of duty? Not one person raised their hand. Second tour, not one person. Third tour of duty, three. Fourth, one. Fifth one and sixth one. That's never happened before. Pause it. And this could have been avoided. Biden. If maybe... Barack Obama, who was your then boss, and you being vice president, could have actually followed through with your promise of withdrawing American troops from Afghanistan and Iraq. You could have done it, but oh no. Let us from two wars to seven. Brilliant move. Fantastic. Incredible. Heroic on your part. You and your administration are just as responsible as the Bush Cheney administration. And just as responsible as the Trump administration. Who else is starting to get angry and mad? This man is clearly suffering from dementia. He's being senile. He needs to get on the nearest train, and he has no pun intended with the train going backwards. He needs to go to a mental asylum. 
There's something fundamentally wrong with Biden's brain. Never happened before. Well, it's still ongoing. Let's play to rest. One thing to go in and be in the middle of a battle, go home and get sent back again. And so one of the things I've said, and I've gotten in trouble for saying, but not anymore, I've been saying it from the, since I've got elected, we have a sacred obligation. Only one obligation is government. We have a lot of obligations to, to the elderly, the poor, the children, et cetera. Only one sacred obligation, to equip those that we send to war and to care for them and their families when they come home. Pause it. And so. Right here, Joe. That's for you. Um, veteran suicide rates have been at their highest since these conflicts began. I myself am a former veteran, a former Marine. I'm a veteran. And there's a lot of my brothers um, and sisters who served in different branches who are struggling with a lot of issues. And yet this country is not taking care of them. Yeah, they support the troops, but screw them when they come home. Previous administrations, both Democrat and Republican, have failed to follow through with that promise. And they're going to continue to fail to follow through with that promise. Because all that they care about, these politicians, these oligarchs, is their bottom line. They see people as pawns. They don't see us as living people. They don't care about what we have to go through. So this whole idea of him right now saying, oh, we care about you. We, we support you. We're going to make sure you're taken care of. That is a lie. Play the rest of the video. You all are an amazing group of women and men. And I just want to thank you for your service. As your commander in chief, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. As I said, it's not new to me. I, uh, my son spent a year in Iraq. He spent six months in Kosovo. Won the Bronze Star, the Conspicuous Service Medal, and other awards. Proudest thing he ever did was put that uniform on. Like many of you, he didn't have to go either. He was the Attorney General of the State of Delaware and the Delaware National Guard. And what happened was when his unit was going to be sent, Overseas, he had to go to Washington to get a, a, an equivalent of a dispensation because you either had to be federal property or state property. He was the attorney general of the state. He had to give up the office in order to be able to go with his troops. The point is that there were hundreds and thousands of people like my son, like all of you. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's not only what you're doing to help the Ukrainian people. It's not only what you're doing to help Europe begin to gain and regain its confidence. The reason why, when the general, when the Secretary of State asked me if I'd send another 12,000 troops along to the United States, I said, yeah, from the United States. We've got 100,000 American forces here in Europe. We haven't had that in a long, long time because we are the organizing principle for the rest of the world. Let's end it here. Let's end it here. Enough. It's not going to be democracy versus oligarchy. It's going to be oligarchy versus oligarchy. I want to pull up this article from The Hill. And again, everyone's talking about it. There's some quotes from it. Again, buy into U.S. troops. We're in a fight between democracies and oligarchs. I'd like to pull up the next article, though, because this is something that's been ignored by corporate media. From Common Dreams. Yemen faces unimaginable suffering as U.S.-backed Saudi war enters eighth year. Huh. Gee, we're back in a war and it's a genocide in Yemen. Huh. As the Saudi-led war in Yemen enters its eighth year, international humanitarian groups on Thursday expressed concern about the state of crisis gripping Yemenis, reporting the civilian deaths are on the rise. Millions are facing severe hunger and malnutrition, and three-quarters of the population are in urgent need of humanitarian support. Oxfam International warned that another year of war would bring unimaginable suffering to civilians, and almost two-thirds of Yemenis will go hungry this year unless the warring parties lay down their arms or the international community steps in to fill a massive gap in the appeal budget. 
According to the international organization, the Yemen humanitarian response plan is currently 70% underfunded and has left and has left 17 million people facing acute food insecurity, with predictions that the number will rise to 19 million by the end of 2022. After seven years of war, Yemenis are desperate for peace. Seven years of war. So four of that was under Trump. And that would mean that the other three went, oh. The other administration that came before Trump. Don't remind me. Hang on. My brain's working. Barack Obama and Joe 30330. That was a previous administration before Trump. So, hmm. U.S. backed, by the way, U.S. backed war. <clears throat> Let's say it again for the people in the back. It's a U.S. backed war. There's a genocide happening. The American people, that's what we're doing. Right? That's what our government's doing. Back in that. All right, great. Y'all got it? Good. All right. The war has caused severe economic uh, shocks throughout Yemen, causing a fuel crisis that has, at times, seen a 543% increase in oil, as well as drastic increases for essential items such as food, water, medicine, making them unaffordable to many. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has also further exacerbated Yemen's, uh, food, Yemen's food crisis as the country imports 42% of its grain from Ukraine and prices have already started to rise. In addition to food, water, and healthcare shortages, Yemen's infrastructure has also been ravaged by war. Humanitarian groups say that civilian deaths and injuries have doubled since the United Nations did not renew the group of eminent experts, uh, a group of eminent experts in October of last year, a monitoring program that was documented human rights abuses in Yemen. According to the IRC, over 19,000 civilians have been killed or injured from airstrikes alone since the beginning of the conflict in 2015. January of this year saw the most casualties in one month since the war began with 139 civilian uh, fatalities and 187 uh, civilians injured. Over 300,000 people have died as a result of the more than seven years of fighting, and over 4 million people have been forced to flee from violence over the same time period. Hey, were any of those refugees taken care of, just like how we're taking care of the refugees in Ukraine? You know, some, some, something we should bring up. Human rights groups ha and some Democratic U.S. lawmakers have been calling on the U.S. government to end the multiple sales of million-dollar arms and contracts to the Saudi regime and end its culpability in the humanitarian crisis in Yemen. In February, now hang on, watch this heavy hitter. We got a heavy hitter coming forward. In February, Representative Pramila Jayapal, who heads the Congressional Progressive Caucus in Peter DeFranzo, Democrat from Oregon, said that if Joe Biden refused to halt support for the unconstitu unconstitutional U.S. Part participation, <clears throat> going to say that again, they said that if President Joe Biden, current president, you hear that, YouTube? Current president. Right here, YouTube. Refused to halt support for the unconstitutional U.S. participation in the Saudi-led war against Yemen, they will work to pass a new war powers resolution. Oh, yeah, with a heavy hitter like Representative Pramila Jayapal, you know things will get done, right? These politicians are scumbags. I want to end it here. So how else can we end this other than with the real truth? Through the art of comedy. Ladies and gentlemen, this tweet from Ron Placone strikes at the core of the story. The United States is like if the bad guys in Oliver Twist ran a country. I can't argue with that tweet. In fact, look, can we pull it up one more time, please? I mean, seriously, those... Yeah, pretty much. We, the bad guys are running the whole show. It's oligarchs versus oligarchs, not democracy versus oligarchy. Oligarchs versus oligarchs. And you, the regular person, are their pawn. They dance and drink. Because they believe you are weak. This midterm election cycle, don't vote Democrat or Republican. Support ballot initiatives, support independents running for office. We got to break away from the two-party system. They're going to keep on abusing us and hurting us.